my lab's focus is on manufacturing, right? And when I think about the manufacturing is how do you transfer from a design of the product an idea to realize that. Um, so many times, you know, when you look at this, how do we compete in the manufacturing, the global ones, it's you can either make it fast, mm -hmm. low cost, or you can do something that others cannot do. And uh, with the globalization and uh, the issue of the convergence and the issue of the uh, sustainability and manufacturing has a lot of challenges, uh, how to save the energy. Uh, how to utilize them less during the process, mm -hmm. how to generate less waste, mm -hmm. or and how do you enable the products that you generate to use less energy, right? So if you look at the different projects that we have, right now we have two main focus focuses. One is on um, flexible incremental forming process. Mm -hmm. The other one is surface texturing. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the flexible incremental forming processes, it's really enable, empowers individuals, small shops, or even the big industry to generate the parts that they desire to have um, at a fraction of the cost, particularly for low volume production, like prototyping, uh, one of the kind, and uh, uh, you know, custom, customized products. So with that, um, uh, the, the whole thing is you need uh, computer digital imaging. You need uh, uh, a good, like from CAD online metrology. Mm -hmm. um, and you need to connect with the customer. So, and, and then in order to change that from the concentrated process product to more enabling individuals, you are also changing the economics model, the business model. Uh, you are changing the people, the way people think, how parts are made. So I view the convergency as an example for what well, our incremental forming process as an example for convergency as the one that enables the distributed manufacturing, empowering the individuals so that um, you can do um, do just the just manufacture the right amount for the right of, or at the right time. Yeah. The other focus that our lab has is on surface texturing, mm -hmm. because if you think about this, surface exists everywhere. We interact with the, the surrounding, you know, uh, atmosphere. Uh, when airplane flies, when ship moves in the ocean, when the machinery work with each other, um, or even when the the surface. Uh, uh, interaction in joints. So there are lots of actions, you know, interactions around the surface. How can we fabricate the functionalized surface um, at the, not just at the small lab scale, but, you know, you know over very large, you know, kilometers, mm -hmm. square, square kilometers scale, how do we do that? And that's another focus that we have. Mm -hmm. So we have three different processes associated with this. Uh, we have laser uh, processes, we have micro-machining processes, and also micro-forming processes. And the first two, um, laser and micro-machining, are mainly for uh, small areas, probably. And, but they can also use it to fabricate tools. And then we use the tools to do the microforming one to give you the speed that you want. Um, the combination of this could also give you different scale. You can have micro scale plus nanoscale surface together. So this is a very exciting area because we can interact with the fluids mechanics to look at how, sh how we can reduce the drag. Um, we can interact with the biological uh, species to see how the surface either promote or inhibit the growth of the of the bio, uh, you know, cells or bacteria. Uh, we could also look at how to generate self-cleaning surfaces over large areas. So there are lots and lots of different applications, and we are very excited about that. Um, so, and you probably also visit some other labs. Uh, they have they also have some similar concepts. Um, 
So I can give you an example, particularly for the flexible incremental forming processes. I think the biggest uh, help that we could get will be on some you know, cyber interface enabled processes. Because as you can imagine, if those machines are everywhere, you can put them into a network. And uh, right now you can share data you know, on the cloud. But there could be also a different model with the cyber enabled processes. You can control it remotely, for example, and, um, and the diagnosis and collect the data. That's a very interesting concept. The other thing, of course, uh, um, is the economic side, the business model that comes in. Yeah. Um, and then the link between the design and, uh, and uh, process will be really interesting. We also, f one of the, in another thing would be looking at uh, the like, surface finish of the parts. And we can also texture the tool used to form the machines and then give us better surface finish and use less, less uh, force to do that. Um, I view manufacturing, as you mentioned, is uh, the way to give out uh, uh, give out tools for others to use is also enable others to generate uh, products from their ideas. So therefore the connection between uh, what we are making, how we are making versus other disciplines is very natural. So you can think about this as a platform to test out different ideas or different applications come in, you know. so. When you come to me, say you want this, and they say, "Why do you want this? How do you want to this? You know, mm -hmm. and uh, what are the applications? Can we make the changes mm -hmm. because of manufacturability?" Uh, so those kind of interactions are very important. And so I tell my students, go and look at the other departments, listen to their talks, and uh, some of the other discipline. Of course, the computational disciplines is very linked, very much linked to us. We mentioned about the computer science, and uh, that's another area is fabulous, fascinating because you can think about how to make the machine smart, right? Eventually, it's all the control algorithms that goes in there. So we can also think about how our brain works and then use that analogy to control our machines. Uh, so the possibilities <laughs> are really unlimited. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, so going back to what we talked about earlier, manufacturing is really, uh, has lots of disciplines input into it. So for example, my training uh, was solid mechanics and control, okay? And the way that, and with the materials engineering as well as mm -hmm. our undergrads. So with those, these different disciplines, it's very, very useful for manufacturing because you can understand how the material behaves, how to simulate those, and how to control that. Mm -hmm. And uh, similarly, uh, my colleague, Corey Emma, whose specialty is in machining mm -hmm. and uh, machine design, and we collaborate quite a lot mm -hmm. on various projects, the labs that you have seen today, uh, joint lab mm -hmm. between two of us. Uh, so having people from two different uh, backgrounds and working together is uh, very critical for manufacturing. And right now we collaborate with uh, uh, with biologists, with the computational simulation people, with the physics major physicists, and with the material science. And all these different aspects come in uh, are really the key key points about our our labs success. Okay, so we talk about the convergency. Mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing is a platform for convergency with the different disciplines help and uh, to realize the product. Mm -hmm. And globe, then you can you can tell that uh, actually in the, the building that you walked through today, uh, it's all connected. We have this huge building which has our uh, mechanical, all the engineering schools, mm -hmm. as well as chemists are here. Uh, and this provides an earth and a planetary science mm -hmm. is right here. Uh, so it's a very stimulating environment. You can easily walk to the other people's office mm -hmm. and have a good discussion. But how can I make this sensor? How do I do this? You know, um, and globally, if you think about where the manufacturing is going to go, uh, it's going to looking at 
as we mentioned, how you um, do it more efficiently and how do you do it more, um, more specially, mm -hmm. connected to the bio part, okay, how to make, for example, how to make the doctor's operating room much easier with reducing the noise in the, in the mm -hmm. room. Even something like that requires a lot of engineering. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in a global view is uh, we, we use the same resources from mm -hmm. the earth and then we produce the parts and use it for different uh, applications. Mm -hmm. For example, recently um, there's a study on sustainable engineering. Um, and one of the points they point out is people in Asia, for example, um, just in India and China, they have totally different philosophies about how life should be. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, India, for example, kind of against the urbanization, mm -hmm. and China is on the other way, on the hand, is encouraging urbanization. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the product that you generate for local people right there is going to be very different from, say, those in used in India versus those used in China. Mm -hmm. um, so how do we understand how the market works and how people live mm -hmm. and uh, create products that's going to be useful for both mm -hmm. uh, or for one particular local areas. And what we want here also is very different mm -hmm. from <laughs> what people want in Asia. Right. So uh, the, the, the manufacturing at the end, you have to connect to the local environment mm -hmm. and find out um, what's the most suitable ones. And to do that smartly really requires a lot of collaboration.